uh, our group from civic partnership in Ruminan Group 4. We are going to talk about the continuous set of Angora thoughts. So these are our members, including Shilita Pond, Kampan, Shin Chinok, Pantamolot, Nacha Donagasim, Natawadi Saiwong, and Hoshinan Manipan. So these are our outline. And let's start with uh, she complain history making and signalment. So the she complains are there were at least five consecutive deaths of Angora goats, and this farm have anthelmintic resistant problem. On the day that we arrived at the farm, there were two depressed goats. Uh, this farm is tourist attraction. It is a mini zoo with many kinds of animals such as Angola goat, rabbit, Shetland ponies, giraffe, pipe, swan, and chicken, and many more. Of what had happened in the farm for the past two weeks. On 20 September, there were several goats, so the veterinarian came to the farm. Blood were collected from the previous dead goats was unknown. 21st September, another wet went in again and found that one goat was dyspnea, lateral recumbency, hypersalivation, and had fever and gravels long sound. Unfortunately, that goat died right away before the wet could have done any treatment. So the wet performed cardiopuncture to collect uh, blood from the carcass. During 22nd to 26th September, more goats started to show this near sign, and three goats died. And we went to the farm to investigate on 27th September. These are the laboratory results of the dead goats. Blood profile interpretation from three goats. Uh, were leukocytosis, neutrophilia with left shift, thrombocytosis, elevated AST and creatinine. And the fecal examination results from simple flotation and simple sedimentation were strong dive type A, 4 plus, and coccidia, oocis, 4 plus. So the differential diagnosis of the dead goats are bacterial infection endoparasite infestation, including coccidiosis and strong dialysis, strong dialysis, poisoning from drugs or toxin, liver and renal disease. So these are the segments of two goats that show clinical signs when we arrive at the farm. Uh, the first one named Sam is eight, uh, three years old, and the second one named Samli, uh, one year old. Uh, the physical examination, uh, both Sam and Samli had high respiratory rate. Uh, Sam had fine tangles and increased lung sound in all lung lobes, while Samli only had increased lung sound. Both of their rectal temperature are high. Uh, they had helping mucous membrane. Sam temporarily feeling refilling time was, was three seconds. Both of them were deep near and had serious muscle discharge. And from a short score was three out of five. Moreover, Sam had abdominal breathing, pop and sneeze. So this slide show the video of Sam as he has dyspnea and abdominal breathing. Problem list and initial assessment. The problem list in the goat divided in specific size are fine cackle and increased lung sound, abdominal breathing, bilateral silas nasal discharge, and tachypnea. And non specific size are in appetence, depressed, fever, and helping mucous membrane. Initial assessment, five cackle, increased lung sound, and abdominal breathing can be categorized into respiratory system. Locations are lower respiratory tract, which may cause by viral pneumonia, bacterial pneumonia, 
parasitic pneumonia or verminant pneumonia, pulmonary edema or white pulmonary adenomatosis. But this disease lies in the gold. By retro nasal discharge, indicate the lower respiratory tract problems, which may cause by viral pneumonia. For example, para influenza virus type 3, RSV, or respiratory syncytial virus. In the bed, Bhutan from OB virus family, CAEV, or carbide arthritis encephalitis virus. However, in the bed, Bhutan and CAEV are less concerned because they didn't show any other symptoms such as severe diarrhea from in the bed, cyanosis from Bhutan, neurological sign and joy swelling from CAEV. Apart from this, which may cause by bacterial pneumonia, for example, Pagella motosida, Manhemia hemolytica, and can be verminant pneumonia from Lithiocalus pilaria, Photostongelus lupesen, Mullerius capillaris, or pulmonary edema, or contagious carbide pleural pneumonia from Mycoplasma capiculum, but contagious carbide pleural pneumonia is less concerned because mostly they show uh, unit retro nasal discharge and decayed lung cell due to pleural effusion. So the initial diagnostic plan was but correction to check hematological profile and check but chemistry to evaluate liver and renal function. This slide show the but parameter on the day that the code had show seriously respiratory size. The erectogram were abnormal. There were low hemoglobin, low HCT, which indicate anemia in some body, and both SAM and some body were thrombocytosis. The erectogram panels were also abnormal. There were leukocytosis, monocytosis, neutrophilia in SAM. The result from bad chemistry show low BUN, which may cause by low feed protein intake, and along with slightly low total protein and hypoalbuminemia in both SAM and SAMLI. In SAMLI, the bad parameter show normal chronic normocytic anemia from chronic inflammation and chronic blood loss, which may cause by endoparasite infestation. Sam and some Lee also show reactive thrombocytosis. In this case, may be caused by inflammation or infection that produce inflammatory cytokine, stimulating interleukin-6 secretion to release thrombopoietin and activate increasing platelet production or caused by chronic blood loss and iron deficiency or also caused by stress. The results leukocytosis, monocytosis, neutrophilia in SAM, which may cause by uh, inflammation, whether it's caused from bacteria or virus, or as a result of stress leukogam. Hypoalbuminemia caused by protein leakage from vasculitis, endoparasite infestation, or liver disease. Levi assessment. We cannot rule out any cause of bicycle, increased lung sound, and abdominal breathing. And also cannot rule out any cause of bilateral serous nasal discharge too. Um, therefore, our differential diagnosis are enteric pneumonia that primarily cause are the viral infection and the likely pathogen of para influenza type 3 virus and respiratory syncytial virus. Um, the secondary cause is bacterial infection, which the likely pathogen are Pasteurella maltosida and Menheimia hemolytica, and also um, luminous pneumonia that we can that can be ruled out yet. And for the treatment plans and follow up, um, the lower respiratory infection were treated by injecting oxytetracycline long-acting dose 20 milligrams per kilogram. IMSID for five days 
and dexamethasone was scribed to treat the inflammation for antipyrexia at dose 0.5 mg per kilogram IMSID for three days. And at day four, after dexamethasone was prescribed, punicin negumin was prescribed at dose 2.2 mg per kilogram IMSID for three days to be the anti-inflammation and anti-pyrexia in SAM. But in summary, we decided to prescribe only funixin megumin since its clinical harm size of dyspnea was not as severe as SAM. And for the follow-up, at day one, SAM still panting and um, de decreased appetence, but didn't show a sign of fever anymore. And some lead didn't pan, has normal um, appetence and has no fever and also improve in respiratory sign. And at day two to day 14, Sam and some lady didn't pan and has no fever. Both are improved in respiratory sign. Uh, for the other pens, we think we should do the nasal swap to isolate the virus and identify the pathogen. And trans watch um, to do the bacterial culture and drug sensitivity case thoracic radiography throughout the pulmonary edema and to assess the progression of pneumonia to recheck the egg of parasite. For the discussion for the yeah, the, eto the etiology of enteric pneumonia are para-influenza type 3, which likely to be the primary cause and pastorella maltosida in Manheimia, hemolytica are secondary, and the uh, predisposing factors that make the animal to be more susceptible to the infection are stock density, poor ventilation, seasonal weather, stress, and severe endoparasite infestation. Um, the transmission of the disease is by indirect contact between infect and susceptible goat. Prevention of enteric pneumonia or vaccination and enhanced immunity, uh, appropriate housing and environmental management by provide adequate ventilation, minimize the stress, quarantine new animal, and provide good quality of feed and water. For about the vaccination to prevent the enteric pneumonia in gold, that is Manheimia hemolytica and Castrolella maltosida bacterium. So the first shot should be done at three months of age and booster at two to four weeks apart and booster again every year. Um, the second problem in this form is the antelmentic resistance. And the possible cause of resistance includes they have only one pasture and need to be shared for every goat in this small pasture and excessive deworming with the underdose of using drop may be another reason. Uh, and also releasing the goat to the pasture right away after treated so they can shed the egg to the pasture over and over and then that makes the treatment very effective. Um, therefore, the, the sustainable internal parasite management that we have reviewed includes to do the fecal egg cow reduction test before and after deworming to evaluate that the, the drugs still work and treat only target selected treatment by evaluate the pharmacia score and the clinical signs. And also, well, pasture management should be done, for example, to raise the pet dog for about one month at least and let them expose with the sunlight. The third problem is coccidia infection. The predisposing factor includes overcrowded environment. Young goats are more susceptible and the visitors and workers might be another transmitter. So far, the preventive, preventative treatment would be about biosecurity and sanity of visitors and zookeeper. And also there is an anti coccidial drug that can be used, for example, basalosid, monensid, and decoquinate. And for the treatment of choice for coccidial infection is totasuril 20 milligrams per kilogram. So now we can conclude that the continuous date of pubic growth is that the LPS endotoxin from Menheimia hemolytica would attach the monocyte or tissue macrophage, which stimulate pro-inflammatory cytokines, leads to DIC and systemic inflammatory response syndrome and multi-organ dysfunction syndrome that is possibly cause of death. So um, finally, we would like to say thank you to our ruminant clinical clerkship team for valuable advice and thank you everyone for listening.